All right, welcome back to our uh, wind chill calculator app on Android in Android Studio. And uh, one of my astute students, whom I have many of, practically they, well, they all are astute, pointed out that this says BMI calculator. I was doing that for my other class, a BMI calculator, and it's really a wind chill calculator. So one of the things that we did is um, I'm showing you we're in text view. I've also clicked preview so you can see it. So one of the things is if you see something that's incorrect, like you notice that, you can click it in the preview and it highlights it in the code. And there it is, it's our text welcome string. So I go over into the res values strings folder and there it is right there, BMI, it's actually the wind chill. The wind chill calculator. So we go back to the content main and you can see there it now has corrected that. Okay, so at this point, uh, we're ready to move on. We need to add a button and a little window to show the results. So let's do it. All right, we're going to go ahead and test this out by launching it on the emulator, just so you can see. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and launch it. You want to click the little green triangle at the top. And um, now it's going to wait for ADB. If you set one up, You'll be, you'll be good to go. And you'd see, for example, a running device would be if you have your own device connected. I'll do a video on that later. Um, launch emulator is what we want to do. Now, you may not have any virtual devices loaded. I've actually loaded two, a Nexus 4 and a Nexus 5. If you need to know how to do that, you just click on the little ellipsis thing here. And uh, you can create a virtual device. When you click it, uh, you can do, uh, we're going to do his phone, or you can do it as a tablet. So you can take a look at some of the tablets that we have here. Um, and when you want to set one, you just choose what it is you want to use and what do you want to simulate. So why don't I go ahead and simulate the tablet since I haven't done that yet. And let's just do a Nexus 10 tablet, 10 inch size. And then we're going to click next. And then it tells us what API level. You may or may not see this. You might see the API chart. And I'm not seeing it here. It's kind of like buggy for me. Okay, take it back. Um, you might want to look at the downloadable system images here. You click on here, and then you'll see the different system. Marshmallow is the absolute latest. Devices are just starting to come out with that right now. This will date my video, by the way. Um, and then they are uh, by letter. So the higher it is, alphabetically speaking, uh, the further down the alphabet, however you want to view it, the later the release is. API levels, they're given numbers. So uh, you can look at Lollipop, KitKat. I believe, like if you have a Galaxy S4, you're probably at like a Kit Kat. But if you got anything recent, it's going to be a Lollipop, possibly a Marshmallow. So these are different ones. You can just click download on one of these if you want to test it out. So I'm going to download the Jelly Bean and then just let it download. And then we'll select a device to use. Okay, it says it's done downloading. I'm going to click finish on here. And now there's Jelly Bean. I see it there. I'm going to click on next. And now I can go to my Nexus tablet, and then um, what does it have on here? I think everything's ready to go. I can give it a name. Well, it already has right here a AVD name. I'm just going to go with that one, API 23. I'm going to change that to, we'll just try Jelly Bean. No, probably not. We'll do Lollipop. Click OK. So you want to make sure you get the system image as well as the device. If you don't, it's going to give you Marshmallow, which is the latest. And you may or may not want to use that. In case you're not sure, let's look at this distribution chart. This tells us the percentage of devices that are out there. So if, for example, you're going to use Marshmallow, for example, and that's the most recent, only 1.3% of the devices have that currently. You want to use reach 18%, do Lollipop 5.1, you want to get 35% Lollipop 5.0, 4.4 KitKat 70%. So uh, when I set it to Lollipop, I'm really only capturing about 35% of the Android devices out there. Keep that in mind when you de design your devices. This will change over time as older versions start dying out, get deleted, whatever. So when I'm ready, I click Finish. 
then I can select the device, double click it, it will start it and launch it. All right, here it is, it pops up. It takes a while for the whole thing to load. I'm pausing the video in between so you don't have to see all that. Hey, look, a minute later, I got this screen. Let's see how long it takes to finish. Now we have the time. Note it says 255. Apparently, even my emulated device is only at 50% of a charge. And now note the time again here. And now it is 302, still not loaded, but I'm going to double check. Yeah, this is what happened last time. There we go. Uh, okay. Where's my app? I guess it's still loading. 303. Oh, there we go. It's now 304, and I regret doing this tablet. My other ones would have loaded long before. But you know what? I'm going to see this through to the end if it kills us. Well, hopefully it won't. Okay, so I decided to click on my Android Studio, and now it says choose a running device. The click OK. Maybe now it'll work. We'll see. Something happened. It's 307, and now my screen looks different. Woohoo! We're getting closer. Oh, all right, 308. There it is. Welcome to the Windchill Calculator. Now look at the text there. On a 10-inch tablet, which my monitor is bigger than 10 inches, but on a 10-inch tablet, looks pretty good. Right? Uh, let's try to rotate this dude. I forget how you rotate it. I don't know. Here's, let's just go ahead and we'll like simulate. We're going to input in the temperature. Oh, it's not going. Oh, there we go. So it's not opening up the keyboard. I'm a little sad about that. I was hoping it would show the keyboard. But anyways, we can go ahead and put in temperature. And we can put like negative 15 degrees and wind speed, and we could put in uh, 45 miles an hour, whatever. All right, so you get the idea. And um, then we still need to put a button and some way of showing results. So let's go ahead and do that. We go back to our code. Okay, we want to add a button. And we're going to put it after the temperature and wind speed. And that was part of this linear layout. See when I click it, it highlights it there. So right here is we're going to put our button. You'll never guess what it is to make a button. It's button. I Thought you'd not know. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap the content on both. Isn't that lovely? Now, we need to add some text to it. And let me just see. I don't happen to have any text for it yet. No, I don't. Okay, so let's, before we do the text on here, let's go ahead and create a string for the button. And we'll call it button text because we're really that creative. All right, so I go to strings, double click. Wait, that's not strings, that's styles. Here we go. All right, so make sure you get to strings.xml. It's this one. And after the wind speed, I'll just put it right on here. String, name equals. And we're going to call this button. Um, submit. Is that what I said we were going to do? I can't remember. And we'll just put for our text, get wind chill. So now on our text, we just go ahead and put the at sign, at string, and then we're looking for a button, submit. There it is. That will give us our uh, information. The last thing we absolutely need is an ID for this button. We need to program it. And then we could call it submit or we could call it get wind chill. It's up to you. Kind of like get wind chill. It's a very, very kind of Java programming kind of name, get whatever. All right. It's up to you what you want to call it, but that would be one. The other one could just be button submit if you want. Just want to point out that now the button is underneath the temperature and wind speed. Well, that makes sense to do that there. If you would like to center your tech, your button in the middle, like right underneath centered, this is how we, I believe that would be layout gravity. So we're going to go up here, we're going to type here Android layout gravity. Yep, center. We're going to center it horizontally, and now see how it centers it right in the middle? So if you want to center it, that's how you would do it. You want to add a little uh, tab at the top, a little layout 
margin top. Add a little DP there. That looks kind of weird. I think I'll go back and take the uh, layout gravity to uh, left. Which, that's the default setting, but at least we'll leave it there in case you want to play around at the layout gravity. That's where you figure out where in this window do you put it. Vertically, horizontally, how do you, how do you center that? So that's our button, and then we got one last UI element, and that's going to be our results. It's going to be a, a text view. Oh, got to remember to do capital T. Text view, and we're going to go ahead, wrap content. Uh, actually... I'm gonna I'm gonna match the parent instead on the width. Now uh, we need an ID for this as well. And we'll call it text underscore results. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the string as well for text. I'll come back and add it. Let's just go to the strings and we'll add it there. Okay, I'm going to go back to strings. I'm going to add my string. I'm just going to copy and then paste. And then instead of button submit, it's going to be text. Uh, what did I say? Results. I'm going to leave that like it is there. Okay, so I, as I'm looking, I see this little green underline. I was like, what is the green underline for? Turns out um, on here it says it's a typo. So apparently, wind speed is two words. Sorry, the ex English teacher in me has forgotten all it learned once. Um, if you really want to do it that way, you can. And then you did that little green arrow or that little green underline won't bug you so much. But we're gonna have to make a little change if we do that. So just be aware if you change it there to hint wind to speed, I think we could be okay uh, if you don't do that. We go back here. And then I just want to make sure the hint on here, um, wind speed, is there. So if you ever see that at string turn red, it's because it doesn't it doesn't recognize, doesn't find it. So then our text here will be the at string, and then as text results like so. So at this point we got our results. I better add a little top margin on there too. So I was just asked a question about what is it hint or is it text, which is the right one. In the case of a text view, you just set the text. If it's an input, in other words, an edit text, those are input boxes. I use a hint because then it, it's the hint that when you click it and start typing, that hint goes away. Uh, and you don't have to have a hint if you don't want to, but it definitely helps to make sure you know what it is you're a adding. All right, so at this point, we've got our button, we got our text, foot, uh, our text view. This is pretty much ready to go, um, and I might change the size of the results, but in the next video tutorial, what we will do is we'll actually start programming this. And so hopefully um, I'll go ahead and just set the text size. And uh, I think we did 20 SP. All right, there we go. I think the whole thing is ready to go. Good luck on your Android apps. And in the next tutorial, we'll talk about how we actually get that wind chill to do something. Stay tuned.